Talib Kuchukshan. He is a professor of sociology at Marmara University, also a senior fellow at TRT World's Research Center. Talib, thanks so much for coming in. Um, I mean, I read the cue almost as if I could have been speaking in 2011. What are the similarities between that first Arab Spring and this uprising that has been going on for months now? I think there are lots of similarities. First of all, when you look at the people who participate in these demonstrations, uh, they are very much united. Uh, people from the uh, young sections of the society, men and women, and also across political divide and ethnic divisions, you can see that there is a one voice of the people like the Arab Spring in the beginning of uh, 2011. I think this uh, movement will go on because people waited for a long time with the expectation that some radical changes or some fundamental changes in political representation and other areas could emerge. But I think that has expired. People are now on the streets again. And also, one of the, I think, uh, basic similarities is the fact that people do not resort to violence. Again, this is a very peaceful movement, a civil movement, and uh, people you, uh, try to negotiate with the government. I think these are also some of the uh, maybe original aspect of it. In uh, 2011, there was not much of a negotiation between the governments, and the governments were not prepared to deal with the, the issue. This time, we can see that the government seems to be uh, actually well prepared in the negative sense, I would say because now in Iraq you can see that there is a violence uh, used by the governments. They are maybe a little bit more experienced in suppressing the civil rights movements in that sense. Uh, but overall we can say that the similarities are also on the demand side. When you look at what people ask for, I think these are also similar issues. People would like to see more economic prosperity in the uh, countries, more democratization, participation in political life, and actually they would like to decide for their future in those uh, crisis-ridden uh, region. Yeah, I was going to ask you exactly whether you thought that the region's leaders had learned anything from that first Arab Spring. But we had Bouteflika being forced to step down in Algeria. We've had Mahdi in Iraq being forced to step down as prime minister. We've had Saad Hariri in Lebanon being forced to step down as prime minister. And you say that actually what they have learned is how to repress prote protesters. But if they continue to do that, that's not going to win the long-term battle, clearly. There needs to be some negotiation, but there isn't really. Right. I think what we see, that, as I said, I mean, there are mass uh, movements in this region, and you cannot stop this wave. It is now out of the box. In 2011, we have seen that it was repressed, and in some places there was actually transition. In Tunisia, for example, there's a successful trans transition, a negotiation between the opposition and the ruling class, etc. Uh, and here, uh, I would say, one of the, I think, fundamental problems of the region is that there is a lack of legitimacy in the region, and mm -hmm. people are asking for legitimacy, and uh, the regimes, which are not really uh, hearing the voices of people, they cannot remain forever in, in, the, in, the, in the driving seats of the countries. In some sense, in some way, they have to negotiate with the people, they have to listen to their uh, own people. This is the only way to establish legitimacy on top of legitimacy, of course, accountability, transparency, uh, and also uh, maybe power sharing. Mm -hmm. These are some of the issues that you know, clever and bright politicians should uh, actually seek for. Yes, you could look at the example of Sudan, for example, a long-term leader, 30 years in power, and then a power-sharing agreement between the military and a civilian transitional government. What about the demands of the people? Are they completely realistic? In Lebanon, they say, we want a complete change of 180 degrees, but that can't happen overnight, clearly. Right, okay, I think we, need, we should look at some uh, uh, areas of uh, demands. Some are realistic, some are maybe not realistic, but even the uh, demands that are not realistic, people have the right, I think. If you look at, for example, Lebanon, Lebanon is divided on the lines of sectarianism, and sectarian divisions are not accepted in any modern democracy. I mean, if you want to have a democracy, if you want to have you know, uh, political participation, uh, the citizens should be equal, not on the basis, citizenship should not be defined on the basis of sectarian identities. And also in Lebanon, there was one, uh, I think, uh, uh, census in 1935. Since then, there hasn't been any, but the, the society has changed, the population has changed, and the power balance also uh, changed. Therefore, I think um, uh, a democratization should take place and also uh, some other concerns should be addressed, like the poverty, 
unemployment, if you look at the unemployment rate among youth in the Middle East, I mean, that is huge. It's, it's unparalleled to uh, any other place. And we are talking about well-educated people. And I think this region is very rich in terms of hum human resources. But unfortunately, these human resources cannot be utilized well, simply because of the bad governance. And people are also demanding for good governance. That means they would like to see some transparency. They would like to see also accountability. The leaders and the regime should be accountable to people. And they should go uh, by election. They should come by election. This is the dream that many people uh, are having in this region. I think these are very legitimate demands. And unless these demands are uh, addressed, I think the problems will continue. And the, if the problems turn out to be uh, some kind of um, uh, uh, conflict, uh, but we see that uh, these are uh, some conflicts that never end. Talib, thank you so much indeed. We're out of time. Headlines are coming your way in just a couple of minutes. Thanks for your company. Bye-bye.